pleasure to be introducing Peter Sutton, who I have known and worked with in numerous capacities for the last 10 years at the Bruce Museum. He's the executive director of the Bruce Museum. And uh, before that, he has just the most impressive uh, background. He was a curator at the Philadelphia Museum of Art, Boston Museum of Fine Arts. He was the director of the Wadsworth Athenaeum in Hartford. And he was the senior director of Christie's Old Master Paintings Department. He was educated at Harvard as an undergraduate and received a doctorate, doctorate from Yale. He has written new, so, on so incredible amount of material on Northern Baroque paintings. In fact, when I was a curator, I, I mean, all, I just had his tomes. He basically was the blockbuster, the man who made Netherlandish art a blockbuster, a popular, a popular subject. He really put Dutch paintings on the map. And he would have these tomes, the Age of Rubens, 17th century Dutch paintings. I mean, it was just incredible. Peter really presented Dutch art in such an incredibly encyclopedic manner. Um, I could go on and on. One of his exhibitions that was at the Bruce Museum a while back and that traveled around the country was the first exhibition that really looked at the sketches, oil sketches of Peter Paul Rubens, which is an interesting medium to really look at you know, oil sketches, not just drawings um, by an artist. Um, he's also on the board of the American Friends of the Mauritz House, the scientific committee of the Tissenborn Misa Museum in Madrid, the, and the art advisory committee of the King Baudouin Foundation. So it's my great honor and pleasure to welcome you, Peter. Thank you very much, Ariane. That's very, that's very flattering. Um, uh, I've been busy, uh, but I'm old. <laughs> I'm old. Um, I hope you know where the Bruce Museum is. It's, uh, it's in Greenwich. It's uh, exit five. We have an expression, easy to find, hard to leave. Uh, that, that's it right there. Uh, and uh, it's been, that features its 1992 edition. It's had other ones before that. It, has, it, has, uh, it was founded in uh, 1914. It's been around for more than 100 years, and it has about 90,000 visitors a year. We teach about 28,000 school children. We do 1,500 educational programs. Uh, we are a very busy little place, uh, and, uh, and we're proud of that. Uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Mostly we do, we do education through exhibitions. We do about 14 shows a year, which is more than we probably should do as a small place. Uh, but it's, it's, it's what we do, and it's what we enjoy doing. We recently, uh, in, last, in the last, uh, last spring, did a show of Alfred Sisley. Alfred Sisley is, of course, one of the great Impressionist masters. Uh, he, was a, he was a very interesting artist because he was, in many ways, the, most, the purest of all the Impressionists. Uh, he uh, believed in the, in the basic tenets of Impressionism, which are divided light and color. He painted atmospheric effects with the, with the finest of subtlety. Uh, he painted skies. He painted beautiful reflections in the water. Uh, and he was a very busy man. Uh, but in funny thing, he was, he was born to, into an English family, but he was born in Paris. And, um, and in many ways, the French regarded him as English, and the English regarded him as French. So he, in fact, he in fact didn't, he in fact didn't, wasn't very successful in his life. If anybody really struggled among the Impressionists, it was it was Sisley. Uh, uh, you know, Monet was rich enough at the end of his life to reroute the Seine to to, wa to water <laughs> Giverny, uh, uh, and and Renoir was was hugely popular, and even even uh, even. Pizarro, who was, who was more or less a socialist, uh, he, he too found success. But poor Sicily struggled until the very end and then died kind of, kind of, uh, kind of quietly. Uh, but this was a very good monographic show that featured, uh, featured pictures from all of his, all of his periods. He, he, was a, he was a person that fell into a lot of, a lot of mishaps and, un, and misfortune. Uh, all of his, his, almost all of his juvenilia, the first 10 years of his, of his life, were destroyed by, in the Franco-Prussian War. The Germans came in and they, they ruined his studio. So, that, so we have very few things from the 60s by him. But it means that he starts uh, in full flight uh, in, uh, the, in, the Impressionist, in, the, in the Impressionist era. Uh, and let me just go forward. I, I, I should have explained that, th that this show is now, should you 
be going to Paris in the in the next in the next week. You could see you could you could you could see it at the Hotel Comon in Aix-en-Provence. We we, we are we're rather proud of the fact that we do we do shows and we export them. We we think of we, we think of ourselves as very entrepreneurial, uh, and this is a, a fantastic fantastic new facility uh, where they had very ample ample uh, spaces to to display these works, and uh, you should really go. Uh, it's uh, it's it's also fantastically beautiful city to visit. Um, so uh, Sisley's juvenilia is, is pretty much gone. He was, he was friends with, with uh, Renoir and Monet. Uh, he was in the studio of Glare with both of them. Uh, and he worked in the, in the same watering holes that, that they, they worked in, Bougival on the left, and other lovely places. Uh, and wonderful responsiveness, as I say, to the skies and the reflections in the water, and very clever ways in which he, which he, he moves the eye back into space with, with a picture like this, with a, with a, little, uh, a little white fence and a, and a, and a, a, curving, uh, a curving road. Uh, he, was, uh, he was a very talented artist indeed. Um, but he was rather different than, than the other Impressionists. You know, uh, Monet was rather famous for painting single images of if it was Falaise or if it was, it was Rouen Cathedral or if it was the Bend in the Seine. He would paint it from the exact same place again and again and again under changing conditions of light. Um, <clears throat> Sisley had a different approach. He had a more comprehensive approach. He would actually circle a mo motif and do it from all 360 degrees, uh, which was a kind of a very interesting way to, way to go about this. So that this bridge, which is in Villeneuve-la-Garenne, uh, he does from both from the side uh, with these nets uh, uh, drying in the sun. He does it from the, the, uh, the, uh, the entryway to the bridge itself above. And he also does it from the, from, from the, the, the banks of the river. Uh, so he's done it from three different angles, and this happens, it, re it recurs throughout his life. It's a very interesting feature to Sisley's work. Um, he was, as I say, English, and he occasionally went back to England. Uh, he usually did so at the, uh, in the, through the benefactions of friends. Uh, he did, he, as he, I say, say he, he struggled mightily to, to, to make, make ends meet. These are two paintings that were done near uh, Hampton Court. He went back uh, in 1876, and... Uh, Painted not only the weir at Hampton Court that enables the, the scholars to, to, uh, to row on flat water, uh, but also pa painted this wonderful picture of the underside of, of, the, of the Hampton Court Bridge. What a remarkable, remarkable vantage point to choose. And you can see, uh, you can see in, in, the, in the distance there, you can, you can see rowers going by and skiffs and things. But what a remarkable thing to choose the underside, the underbelly, as it were, of, of the bridge, um, a very daring compositionist. Um, he also did, did images of the, the floods at Port Marly on the Seine. These were very popular. He, mostly he, his, his things were not well received, but, uh, but his, his floods at Port Marly were regarded as some of his best things. You can actually go see that, that, that building even now. Uh, I think you can still get a, get a, a drink in there. Uh, it's, a, it's very nice. But he, but by and large, he didn't do modern buildings. Uh, uh, all the other impressionists were very interested in street life in Paris. That was not what what uh, what what Sisley was interested. Sisley kept moving out farther and farther into the countryside, and remained a very rural painter. So when he painted large edifices, they were not modern edifices; they were ancient edifices, or at least old edifices. This is the the aqueduct that brings the water to Versailles, and it was done. It was created in the 17th century, so it is actually a, a quite an quite an ancient building. Um, and and once again, when he when he, he he paints the watering hole at Versailles, where the water is collected after it's brought in by the by, by the the aqueduct, he does it from three different sides. Here we go. Uh, in winter, and that's an another view of the same, the same watering hole, and this is yet another one. Beautiful painter, by the way, of, of winter light. He was, he was remarkably responsive to that. I think only Monet was a better painter of winter light. Um, so an artist of a very, a very distinctive interest in, in, in the contemporary scene. Not much interested in modernity. Uh, so when he has, when he does, he paints, for example, um, a locomotive. There's a locomotive, and there's there's the Sevres train station. He hides it. Uh, it's kind of behind the buildings, or it's up a hill and and obscured by this wonderful uh, weaving path. 
uh, he doesn't want to really play up, uh, play up contemporary life and in the industrial modernization of, of France. Uh, he kept to, him, to his own. He was a very rural person. Um, in, in Marly, where he was at the end of his life, uh, he starts painting the cathedral there. Just in the same year as Monet starts to paint Rouen Cathedral. This is very interesting. Uh, Monet in, 19, in 1896 begins to paint these things and paints them all from the same room, in, from the same position, and, and once again captures the facade under changing light conditions. That's not Sisley's way. Sisley walks around the building and paints it from different sides. Uh, so it is, he's an ambling painter. Um, and, uh, and alas, he was cut off at the pockets by his father when he was a very young man. So he, he, he actually came from a fa fairly wealthy family. His father disapproved of his common law wife with whom he stayed for 28 years. Uh, and sadly, at the very end, end, end of their lives, he took her on a vacation to Wales. I, I don't think Wales is, is a summer vacation place, but, but, <laughs> but he did. And, he, and he, took, he made her an honest woman. He took her to the town hall and, and married her, and sadly they both died soon thereafter. Uh, um, the, the person who, who handled his, his affairs after his death was Monet, and Monet stayed by him and even, even did the, the, the sale of his, his studio at the end of his life. Uh, they, were, they remained very close. Um, so a very interesting man and rather misunderstood. And there are no letters by him, so there's, there's very little insight into, into what his personality was like. But by and, by, by and large, uh, we seem to think that he was, he was a nice, unaffected man uh, who was very devoted to his art and was the purest of all the Impressionists. Um, we've done a show recently of highlights of the Bruce Museum's art collection. We do that because we like to remind people that we have 15,000 works of art by, by all kinds of artists, but they're never on view because we have no permanent galleries of art, which is a very uh, frustrating thing for yours truly because we can't really teach the history of art properly. Uh, and we, I, it's particularly frustrating for me because a lot of these things have been acquired in the last 12 or 15 years since I've been here. We have a beautiful carpo that was given to us of a Neapolitan fisher boy. We bought a tiso. Here's a tiso of, of his girlfriend, his Irish girlfriend. Here's, uh, here's a St. Gaudens uh, that uh, we acquired that is a, 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 a profile portrait of Stevenson, uh, the famous, famous uh, Scottish poet. And this is a... a, a uh, a, a chase, uh, which is one of the great bravura brushwork works by, a, by an impressionist, uh, impressionist landscape painter. Uh, we also buy, buy opportunistically. Uh, we've tried to expand the collection so that we will be able to teach the history of art in the future. Uh, we bought this, this picture from Agnews last year. It's a wonderful tondo portrait of, of a gentleman in rough. And we got it very cheaply because we don't know what it is. We, we, we have no idea who it is. I've been trying out all kinds of different people on it, but I think it's only the superficial resemblance to the rough. Uh, that's uh, Cornelius Catel, this is uh, Willem Kai, this is Jan van Ravestein, but I don't think that any of those are the same hand. So we don't know who it's by, but it's a very good picture, and uh, you should always buy quality and not necessarily, not necessarily names and provenance. Um, here's a picture, like many of these pictures, that, ah, and here's a tip for you. Uh, we bought this picture in, in Milford, uh, in, in, in Shannon's Auction House. Shannon's Auction House is in a truck stop behind, behind a gentleman's club. <laughs> I, I, I made the mistake once of sending my assistant there, and she, she, and she, fa she found it was, it, she ran the gauntlet. Uh, through. But this is by Pito. Pito and Harnett are two of the greatest... Uh, the greatest uh, um, uh, still life painters of the American 19th century. He does very wonderful kind of abstracted image with, with uh, smoking supplies, with candles, books that, that, that speak of a kind of late night of scholarship. Here's another one that's very similar. Um, and he also likes illusionism, so he did a lot of these letter racks, but he was one of the best. We got this for a song. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very beautiful small picture like that. Um, um, this too we got in Shannon's. Can you imagine? You see, if you, this is a Paxton. Paxton is was from the Boston School. He was a, a wonderful painter of, of of elegant ladies at their at their at their toilette. Uh, and this is the corner of his studio, with uh, with. Uh, a little uh, with an umbrella that ob he's obviously just been out in the rain because you can still see that there's water dripping onto the floor. I think that's a lovely detail. He's got wet shoes, so he took those off. 
uh, and he, there, there are curtains over, the, over the, 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 uh, the windows to control the light. But this is the most interesting thing. This, this, this red hot stove, this little stove, that comes uh, from another artist. Um, here is his usual paintings of elegant ladies that look like Vermeer or Ter Bork. That's, that's a picture in Boston. Here's the picture we just were looking at. This is a painting that was 60 years before Paxton painted that. It's got the same stove, it's got the same, same things. That's by Delacroix. So, so, this is the, so this is an homage to Delacroix. Which, and it is amazing how many other artists wanted to pay homage to Delacroix. This is a picture of about 1625, 1630. This is 1685. They were still doing it 60 years later. This is Cezanne. You see, there's the stove. Here's, here, are the, here are the stretched canvases. These are three paintings by Basile, who sadly was killed in the, in the, in the, in the, the Franco-Prussian War. Here's the stove. Um, there's the stove. Uh, there's the stove. Somehow the stove as a symbol of the crucible of the, of the, of the studio, as the, as the place where you create things, is, is a very moving, moving thing for me. And I'm very glad we got that in the truck stop. Um, <laughs> very cheaply, by the way. Um, Carlson is one of the highlights of our collection. We have very beautiful still lifes. Uh, he was influenced by Japanese art, as you can see in another work by him. Beautiful peonies. And then we, of course, have the Koskov School, because uh, it was the local school for us. And we have people like Hassam and, and Edwards and Twachtman and Ochtman, who are all members of the Koskov School. That's the, that's, oops, sorry. That's the, that's the, the, the uh, that's the railroad bridge on the Mianus River. That's, that's the Mianus River right there. That's the Mianus River. This is actually in, uh, in Illinois, but we, we had to have a Twachtman because Twachtman is one of our best. Uh, but it was, we, we also had Robinson that we've acquired recently. Robinson does wonderful studies of, 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 of cherry blossoms, and he, did, he expanded this into a, into a, 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 a composition with a figure. Uh, you can see how it was a study for that, for that composition. It's very nice to be able to teach, teach people uh, the, the, the progression and the, and the functions of works of art. So uh, we do like to try, find uh, oil studies and things like that. We bought this in, in the truck stop. I, 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 I kid you not. I kid you not. This is a Britcher. Britcher was a very interesting artist who was based in Boston. He, he worked most of his life as a businessman, kind of came to his senses in, in his late 30s, 40s, that he liked to be a painter. Uh, and he did these wonderful paintings that seemed to be inspired, but not but literal transcriptions, of the North Shores of Boston. Uh, and here's our painting with this wonderful flat water and, the, and this green, this green, uh, green headlands. And then these are some other ones. You see how, how similar they often are. They're kind of, they're kind of variations on a theme, but the, it's not formulaic. It's, it's really very vivid and individualized. Um, very nice artist. Oops, now I've done something. Um, other landscapes in our collection include Kensett. This is a Kensett on the lower left that's from Lake George. And this spectacular picture is probably our best, our best American landscape. Uh, it is <clears throat> by uh, Martin Johnson Heed. It's probably the Medfield uh, marshes with grain stacks and this wonderful windswept sky. Uh, a, a, tr a truly, uh, 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 truly, I, uh, outstanding, outstanding uh, luminous picture uh, that was given to us by one of our trustees. Um, this is the William Merritt Chase. Um, you can see how quickly that's executed, the bravura brushwork and the, and the wonderful speed of execution, the alacrity of it all. That was probably done in about 45 minutes. <clears throat> quite, quite seriously, he, he made, a, made a point of showing his showing his students, and he was a very, very influential teacher, that you could do things with great speed and, 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 and quickness that captured things in, in a moment. Uh, and this is a particularly beautiful picture, I think, that we got at Christie's uh, so, some years ago. Um, he was kind of a show-off, uh, Chase. You can tell it from, por from, from yeah. so Sargent's portrait of him. Here he is, even, even from, his own, from his own portrait. Uh, he, was, uh, he was quite a, quite a dandy. And, and painted, painted in, in white tie and tails, uh, and, and never, never dropped paint on himself. Uh, but he also was a spectacular painter of landscapes, too, and the same speed of execution uh, is seen in his, his sketches here, places like Shinnecock in Long Island, 
That's in, the, that's, that's in Hartford, very nice picture. Um, he was also a teacher of many people. Uh, he and Henry were kind of competing teachers. We did a show some years ago <clears throat> about the competition between Henry and Chase. Uh, and I think, I think Bellows here, who's a Ashcan school uh, a student, was a student of both of them. But I think he probably took away more from Henry than he did from, uh, did from, uh, uh, from Chase. Uh, I love that, 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 that stink eye he's giving you there. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, uh, he's, he's a he, this is, this is a Danish, a Danish artist that he was, he was a friend with. Um, Here's one of our, our favorites. Um, this is a, a Tiso that we bought also at, at Christie's. It's a pastel. Uh, it's a lovely thing of a, of a, woman, uh, a woman looking at a, at a portfolio of, of, um, of prints. Uh, and it's large and wonderful. The, the speed, again, of, of the execution in the background gives it a kind of febrile, febrile immediacy. Uh, this was uh, actually of his girlfriend. His girlfriend was, was Irish. Uh, and her name was Kathleen Newton, and there she is, there's a photograph of her. And here she is in our picture, and here she is in another picture. And she often, uh, often uh, posed for these paintings that he did, he did of the fashionable women of Paris. Uh, and he did a whole series on this. Everything from ladies making, a, making an entrance in a salon to, uh, to circuses. There were wonderful circus paintings by, by Tissot. Um, this is a painting that is kind of, or a sculpture that's kind of near, <coughs> near to my heart. Uh, it's by Gaston Lachaise. Uh, we did a show of Gaston Lachaise, I think about, oh, it must be six years ago now. Um, and we bought this, uh, this sculpted portrait. Uh, this is a portrait of that man on the, on the right, who is Lincoln Kirsten, who started the American Ballet with Balanchine. Um, and so, it's rather unusual to have a, a full-length male nude portrait. Think about how many of those you know. Uh, not, not too many. It doesn't happen very often. But it's wonderful because it, he has, has used, uh, Lachaise said, has used what is essentially the beginning of animation in, in the history of sculpture, when kouroi, when Greek kouroi, like this one down here, first moved their, their foot out. But, but he does it and moves it out on, t on point, as it were because it, he's a dancer. Uh, he was the first boss I ever worked for. Uh, he, ran the, he was the big benefactor of the Stratford uh, Shakespeare Theater. Uh, and I, I, he, he hired me to catalog the collection. And I spent a wonderful, happy summer catalog, cataloging all the Shakespeareana. I didn't realize that it was my first exercise as an auctioneer, because they sold everything that I, <laughs> that I got. <laughs> but it was very nice to, to live with actors and actresses and and feel I was a bohemian briefly. I'm not much of a bohemian. Um, this, is a, this is a wonderful Rauschenberg that was given to us by one of our trustees. Uh, uh, it's one of a series that he did in the, in the, eight, in the 1980s uh, that were inspired, I, I think the, the titles were inspired by, by Japanese prints of the 19th century, <clears throat> but I don't think they really have anything to do with with Japanese prints, uh, it's called Greyhound Nightmare, and I don't see I don't see where the greyhound is, and I don't I don't see where the nightmare is, but, but it is an inclined plane with a with a chair and a <clears throat> and a box, and all these wonderful uh, um, um, these wonderful lithographs that he does, and, and off off prints that he does on the on the platform. It's quite a big piece, and it's probably the most important contemporary piece that we have. These are some other ones that relate to it. Um, there was, <coughs> he did, as I say, Greyhound Nightbear, and he did m something called monogram. That's the goat with the, with the, with the, the, uh, uh, the, the tire around it. And, and first landing jump is the one with the, with the tire on, on the upper right. Um, and of course, they're all inspired by Marcel Duchamp, who's, whose famous fountain was, uh, it was, was, was submitted to the Armory Show way back in 1914. Or, Thereabouts. Um, here's Lynn Chadwick. Um, Lynn Chadwick was in, the f in that first picture that we had. Uh, this is actually installed out, out of doors. He often does abstracted figures, male and female, who, 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 who sit or walk together. Um, I confess that one of, my, one of my predecessors was a little disturbed when we got this, this, this picture because, because um, 
the, the two figures are, are kind of uh, united by this, this bolt in the middle. And he, 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 thought, he thought that might be too risque. I haven't had any complaints in 15 years. But, uh, but there are people that see things in art that sometimes I don't see. Uh, um, other nice outdoor sculpture that we have, we have a great Gaston Lachaise on loan from the Lachaise Foundation. We have these Mary Franks. Uh, we have both now uh, ones that she did in bronze and ones she did in terracotta. Lovely kind of languid figures that, that are, 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 uh, are very delicately done. The fastest growing area of the collection is in photography. We have, we have boy, we have tens of thousands of photographs and we, we, it grows every year, Brett Weston and Nirenberg, who started uh, Donsk, uh, and uh, Florence Henry, uh, Castain, uh, wonderful photographs, and we do photograph shows almost constantly uh, in the lecture hall gallery. This is a new group of photographs, though, that we've gotten. This little group, I'm, I'm very proud of that. Uh, the, the Warhol Foundation realized that we're actually now becoming quite an important center for the showing of contemporary art, and so they gave us this little, this little group of Polaroids by Andy Warhol. There are about a dozen of them in there, and, uh, and this is what he worked from. He, he, he would make Polaroids, 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 and then he would, then he would, he would make his, his prints from those Polaroids. Um, and he did it for one of our trustees. This, this gorgeous lady right here is, uh, is Sachiko Goodman, who's one of our, our trustees, who has three huge paintings by Warhol. My wife always was angry with me that I didn't get rich enough soon enough that I could buy a Warhol of her. But it, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't in the, in the works. Um, but but this, was, this was an interesting show we did it this summer because it, it showed that, there's, that, that besides the kind of mechanistic side to Warhol that we all know, namely the Brillo boxes and the, and the camp soup cans, he did still lifes. And he also did things about endangered species. Um, these are all these were all an endangered species print series that he did that were quite sensitive, and of course it was another a good excuse for us to bring out the, the intersection of art and science. So we would bring out our mounted specimens. Early on in my career, I was told not to say stuffed animals. They're they're, they're mounted specimens. That's what they are. <laughs> but that was a very well that was a very well received show. And this on right now you can go see this. This is Nikon. Every year has a has a photography uh, competition for for micro photography, and these are things that are very hard to, to guess what they are. But they're small worlds. This thing on the left is the proboscis of of a butterfly. This is a zebrafish, an embryo of a zebrafish that's only four days old, and you'll never guess what this is. This these two wavering trees. That's a slime mold. Uh, slime mold. It is. And these, and these are, are kind of interesting things. Um, uh, this, this, these are, are, are skin cells that have been transformed into brain cells, which is really a kind of important new, new uh, source of, uh, source of uh, experimentation at the moment. And, um, and that guy is, is some kind of minor moss, uh, but he's very beautiful too. Um, George Wharton Edwards was a, a, a Greenwich a painter, illustrator, and writer. Uh, I don't think he's had a show in 75 years. We have a big show on, his, on of his, his things at the moment that include his impressionist pictures, which are like wonderful drippy ice cream cones. Uh, and then also his, his, his images of, of the Far East and of, of the capitals of Europe that he, he made into prints and then became, they became illustrations for books that he wrote. He was a very interesting man. Uh, and quite a distinguished artist in his own right, who was part of the art community and the art, <coughs> the art colony uh, in, 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 uh, in, in Greenwich, but he's utterly forgotten. Hasn't been around for 75 years. And then this is the, the, the leading show that we have in at the moment, uh, which is called In the Limelight, toulouse lautrecs Portraits for the Heracliden Museum. All of these portraits, which are 104 in number or something, let me know, 124, I take it back. Um, are all from one collection. Uh, they're owned by a gentleman who lives in Fairfield, but who also has his own private private museum in Athens, Greece. And he has this has been traveling around uh, Europe, and now for the first time it's in America. Uh, so you must come and see this. This is Toulouse Lautrec, who, as you know, was an eccentric little man. Um, he was um, he was pr principally little because he was the last the last um, he was the last. Uh, Duke of, uh, of Toulouse. Uh, 
So all of his, his predecessors uh, had tried to, tried to, to ensure the, the, the purity of the blood, but not knowing much about genetics, they all married their first, their first cousin. And as a consequence, they had terrible genetic problems. And that's, that's the reason why he's so short. Quite seriously, he broke both of his legs when he was growing up, and they stopped growing. And so he was only about four foot six. Um, his, his, um, um, his family wasn't so happy about him becoming an artist, but he became the great denizen of the night. He went out every night uh, and, and, and burned the candle at both ends and knew everybody who was, who was somebody in show business. Um, uh, this is Jean Avril, uh, this lady. Uh, this is uh, a guy named Aristide Brunel, uh, and who was, uh, all these people had lived kind of double lives because uh, he, for example, uh, pretended that he was some kind of rustic uh, and wore a, a, a hunter's cape and a big felt hat and it had this signature red uh, red uh, scarf uh, and he sang songs that were that were kind of off color uh, really <laughs> slang songs and 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 uh, and and insulted the the, the, the company uh, of his his audience and they loved it you know they, they they all they all wanted to go to Montmartre and pretend that they were doing something dangerous and he would sing songs about prostitutes and criminals and and they just loved it uh, and and he was a tr he was a tremendously popular figure in his day and a great friend of Toulouse Lautrec. Here are some or more pictures that are in the show. This is Jean Avril uh, who was who was not who was not simply a, a frisky, risque, can-can dancer. She actually was quite a, a well-known well figure in literary circles and was a collector of prints. Um, uh, he knew the people that published the best literary magazine of the, of, of the period, the Revue Blanche. He made posters to advertise important books of the period, Babylon d'Allemagne. This, uh, this was a criticism of, of uh, German militarism. That's, uh, that's Kaiser Wilhelm over there. And he did these wonderful caricatures of people. Here is Yvette, Yvette Guibert. Yvette Guibert was, by all accounts, not a very good singer. Uh, she had a reedy voice. And she was, she was, uh, she was un unfashionably thin. Uh, and she wore these black gloves everywhere. And so there are all these paintings that he did of, of uh, Yvette Guibert, who he was quite infatuated with, uh, who had the black gloves. This was his father. He had kind of mixed feelings about his father, <laughs> who's, all, who's, who's also caricatured and has a very large beard and, and mustache. Um, and, and his father asked him not to sign his name to his paintings because he, did, he didn't want the Toulouse-Lautrec name to be, to be besmirched. Um, and there, here are some more friends of his. This is Chocolat, the, the dancer on the left, who was a rather famous, famous dancer and, and, and co comedy figure in, in, the, in the Café Concert. And this is one of my favorites. This, this, this is a print on the right. Uh, it's called The Vache en Regé. Uh, it's it's the, the, you know, bulls get angry, but, but, but usually cows don't get angry. Uh, so so the, the cow was, the, was the, the, the artist community, and they're chasing this. This, uh, this, is, a, uh, this is one of the ministers of the, of the National Assembly, and who had been very critical of Impressionism and everything. So the Vache en Regé is after him. And the police are coming, and people are riding bikes and having a good time. It's a, it's a wonderful print. And here is Jean Avril again, in a composition based on very much on, based on Dugas. And here is <laughs> here is uh, Toulouse Lautrec dressed in Jean Avril's clothes. Uh, there you go. They got to be great great pals, and uh, and he he could even borrow her clothes to to play dress up. Uh, it was it was something. Uh, then Mae Belford, I've never quite understood what, her, what her, her, her act was, but she always appeared with a little black cat and sang a, sang a song about, I have a little black cat and that's that. <laughs> but she, was, she was Irish, and how she, how she got to Paris and sang that song, I have no idea. Uh, so, but it's a wonderful show, uh, as I say, a big show for us, 120 20 prints. You must come and see it, don't miss it. Uh, got a nice, a nice catalog. Um, this November, we will do a show of Treasures of the Earth, mineral masterpieces from Robert Wiener's collection. This is a gentleman who lives in, lives in, uh, in, in uh, Westchester with more minerals than you can shake a stick at. He's got wonderful ones, better ones than we have. Uh, so uh, we will have them and we will install them with our minerals. He, has, he just bought a 2,000 pound crystal, my goodness. Um, these are, are rather wonderful. Um, uh, we, we have a, a, an intern every year, or, or a resident fellow, 
and we send them into the basement, and they do a show for us. And the nice thing is they come, they come out, and they, they come out with wonderful ideas. Uh, this young lady uh, comes from the Midwest. She's, she was from Louisville and Indiana before, before she came to us, has found out that we have a, quite a large collection of prints from the 1960s and 70s that were given to us by one of our trustees. Uh, and it, it's an, a very in interesting moment that has not been studied uh, because it's after the advent of abstract expressionism when people worked kind of in solitude in their, in their, in their, uh, in their studios. And they came together and actually formed kind of uh, collaborations and worked, in, worked in, 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 in joint studios with each other. The one on the left is, is Raymond Parker. The one in the middle is Louise uh, Nevelson. And Stanley Hayter is the one on the, on the far right. He, he was quite influence, influential in this group. It also included Robert Motherwell and all kinds of well-known people. Um, this actually, we've just decided to change the name of this, this show. Soviet Sublime this was, was misunderstood, I think, because this is a show about, it will be about, about the intersection of art and science in the Cold War, but we're going to call it Hot Art in the Cold War. <laughs> uh, Soviet Sublime was, was being misunderstood. We're not, we're not suggesting that the Soviet era was sublime. Uh, we were, we're just saying that, that, that it's quite topical at the moment because the, the recent, uh, the recent unhappiness between Russia and the United States. And we will have, we will have a, a Sputnik model in it. We will have, we will have dog spacesuits, pretty cool. Uh, we will have, we will have spacesuits from, or, or, or uh, radioactive uh, uh, gear from Chernobyl and all kinds of other uh, related artistic objects. It comes from the Dodge collection at, at, at uh, Rutgers. Um, and to celebrate the centennial of the First World War, we will do a show of First World War posters that were once again given to us by, by a trustee. Our, our trustees are very generous to us. Uh, and that will happen in 2018 when we were most involved in the war. Uh, I like this one. Gee, I wish I were a man. I'd join the Navy. Yes. Uh, uh, yep. Uh, I, don't, I, wouldn't, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't want to ride a torpedo, though. Um, Oops, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Is I want you for the Navy. You see, there was they, they've always tried, tried to, to lure those 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 young men in with 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 things other than military service. Uh, um, wild bees. We all should be worried about pollinators, by the way, folks. We really should because they are very important to all of our all of all the species in the world and all of the all of the things that that they happily happily busily go around and and they're they're even more important than domestic bees, so we really have to be concerned about, uh, about wild bees. Here we have a brown belt, belted bumblebee and a longhorn bee. We have a leaf cutter bee. We have small carpenter bees. And these are the folks that, that photograph these things. They go out and every day they photograph, photograph bees. And we'll have, we'll have photographs that they have made and also blow-ups of, the, of, the, of actual bees under, under microscopes. Another, another National Geographic show will be the, uh, Noah's Ark. We're doing, we're doing all animals, uh, great and small, from orangutans to, to, to tigers. Uh, and that will be a, a quite a large show that we'll do in, in June of next year. I Create is a very, is a very successful show of adolescent and, and high school students' art. And they do amazing things. They really are, are wonderful artists. And every year, they surprise us. And every year I say, you know, it's harder to get into this show than it is to get into Harvard because, because we, we accept something like 50 and we get 650 applications for this. These are really good artists. I have two of them hanging in my, in my dining room and, and they hold their own with prints by Durer and Renoir and, and Rembrandt. Then this is the new, uh, th I, I wanted to give you just a glimpse of this. Um, we are, we have, um, we have pretty much outgrown ourselves and have, have been outgrown even before we, we opened the 1992 edition. Uh, so we're, we're building an edition on the south and east side of the, of the museum. Uh, and this will reorient the museum. It will mean that you will come in, not at the top of the hill, by the, the dark I-95 noisy side, but you will actually walk on a nice easy grade from the parking lot to the front door. And it will be three, three stories high. You will have new visitor amenities. Uh, it will have nicely landscaped grounds, uh, new parking spaces, wonderful sculpture outside, and wonderful things that, that in, include a light court in the middle. <clears throat> a light, this light court will bring, bring light into the middle of the building and, and will, as it were, bring Bruce Park into the middle of the building. So we're, as it were, 
as it were, uh, strengthening our connection with the, with the park. Um, so that will be the, the, the front vestibule with the view into the light court. It will have two stories high, and it will be quite an ample space that can, that can be used not only for, not only for welcoming visitors and for, for uh, uh, orienting them at the, at the, visitors, at the, at the uh, visitors' desk there, but also it can be used for, for big parties, for big corporate rentals, because all the, the valuable stuff will be upstairs. You just turn the key to the elevator, and, and you can open this space to, to corporate rentals or whatever, whatever else, else you need for uh, new operating sources. Here's a new cafe. You, you'll finally not, not have, to, have to go up, up to Greenwich Avenue to, to eat. You can eat right here uh, in a kind of pret-a-manger place with nice views of, the, of the, the, the park out there. It seats about 40. And then this will be the three stories of it. On the first floor, we will have a cafe, a large lecture gallery, the lobby, a shop. Then on the second floor, which connects to the existing building, which will remain open for science, we will connect all the behind the scenes things, all the, the collection storage, all the exhibition prep, all the registrar matters. And then the upper stories will have art on this side, the new edition, science over here, and the yellow is all education. At the moment, it's amazing, we have 28,000 school children, we teach them all with one classroom. Wow. Unbelievable. Um, so this will be the changing exhibition space. That's set up with the Chuck Close show we did two or three years ago. Uh, it would be much nicer if we'd had that kind of space to show him because he does very big things. <laughs> um, this is the way it looks with an old master show in it, the same space. Uh, this was the show we did from the Prince of Liechtenstein last year. And this is the science space, which is wonderful because it, it will be now twice as big and it will, it will, be, it will enable our, our scientist, who is uh, Daniel Sepka, is an avian paleontologist. Uh, he's, that means he does bird bones. And he, is, he discovered the largest bird that ever flew. He did, it's extinct. He's, all, he's, he's not 40 years old. He's discovered eight different s species that are extinct. I mean, it's just, he's an amazingly clever guy. And he's a special specialist on penguins. So the first show, show is going to be a penguin show. Ready, get set. Um, but then I think the most exciting thing about the new, th new, the new building is, are the permanent galleries, the permanent galleries of art. We will first, ha we'll finally have spaces for permanent galleries of art from, uh, <coughs> from, from the Renaissance uh, to Chinese art to, uh, to contemporary art and, and, and very good American art. This is a collection that will come to us along with, along with the, the gallery that they're giving to us. Amazingly important, 16 works by David Hockney, can you imagine? This is another, another uh, collection that's coming to us. Uh, it has Hopper, Homer, Six Wyeths, Mary Cassatt, um, uh, you name it, uh, Robinson. It goes on and on and on. It's very beautiful American art and all comes to us because of the new building. So the new building is a pretty exciting thing, I think. And you see, it has not only the vertical striations that are supposed to, uh, supposed to uh, evoke uh, the quarries of New England, but it also has this, this transparency that is supposed to, supposed to uh, make you think of those mortarless walls that are everywhere in, in, uh, in New England's forests. You, you see those, those walls that are not property boundaries, but it's poor colonial farmers who put the plow on the ground. They brought up a boulder, so they made, property, they made, made walls. Uh, and they have no mortar in them. So I think it's kind of nice that at, at dusk or some penumbra, you will be able to see this three, right through the wall of the front, front of the building. Uh, it's the, the, the architecture is by Eskew, Dumez, and Ripple. Uh, we, we, uh, we spent a very long time, about six, seven years, uh, uh, seeking them out. We hired a headhunter to, to bring us, bring us uh, candidates who he'll built museums, and we finally settled on them. And they're, it was surprising to us, but they, they were far and away the best candidates, and we, they promptly won the AIA award for the best design uh, about two months after we chose them, so we, we felt vindicated. Uh, um, and there's the, there's the little uh, Lynn Chadwick. <laughs> Never can get away from the Lynn Chadwick. Uh, so thank you very much. That's, that's the Bruce Museum in a nutshell. I can try to answer a couple of questions if you'd like to. Okay. I've forgotten the microphones. I do apologize. I'm going to go grab them right now. <laughs> yes. 
Okay, sure. Just wondering when the new building opens. Uh, probably not until 2020. It's, it, it's, it, it's uh, the regulatory process. I'm sure, like in New Canaan, takes a long time in Greenwich. We've been we've been at this for four or five years. Do you have the fund? It's fully funded, or you have it's it's not fully funded yet. No, no, but it's but it's 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 well along on its way. Yes, are, aren't they good? So valuable to give you some insight into every single exhibit. Um, my question, very simply, I know that you have a lot of school programs. We do. With the Greenwich Public Schools. We do. do. you also work with the private schools? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And we, and we work with public schools outside of, outside of Greenwich. <laughs> we have... We, we now have a new program that has been, been sponsored by a very wealthy hedge fund guy in, 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 in Greenwich uh, who enable us, enables us to give, uh, to give bus scholarships to people because the biggest challenge is bringing people in, get, sending them the bus to come in. And mm -hmm. that's been wonderful because it's, it's increased our, our, our school programs by 20%. But we do, we do things for everybody at every age. Come in, come in on a Tuesday at 11 o'clock in the morning and come see toddler tours. That's one of the best. Toddler tours are three and four year olds and they sit on the ground and they, and they, they have the best conversations. You know, they're much more interesting than adults. They really are. I, I, was, I was in there, uh, I don't know, a couple months ago and one of our, 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 our wonderful educators said, said, now we're talking about animals. Now, and she, she said, now are people animals? There was a long silence. And then one of the little boys jumped up and said, yes, they're tame animals. <laughs> <laughs> not sure, I'm not sure about that. Not sure that was the right answer. <laughs> but we, we do everything to, you know, uh, a lifetime of looking, which is, which is people with early dementia and, and their caregivers. I have the microphone now. Thank you. Uh, the portrait of a young girl by Mr. Chase. Do yes. you recall if that had any special provenance? Uh, special provenance. I, I don't think it, I, we do have special provenance. I, I bought it out of, a, out of an auction, and I don't think they know who it is or, or where it came from. Wow. Thank you very but much. It's, 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 a, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous picture. I've been there several times to see it. I'm amazed by it. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, when, she, when she doesn't hang on the walls, I, I put her in my office, I can't. <laughs> yeah. it's, one of the, it's one of the privileges of, of being I, I wanted to comment on a show I saw a few years ago that someone had been able to get back Nazi looted art. Oh, uh, yes. And before they sold it, they let you show a bunch of the things. Yeah, and I, wrote, I, I thought that. it was, I took several out of town guests to it. I yeah. thought it was a very inspirational thing. Both the paintings were wonderful yep. and the way you showed the history of the family. Yep. I, I yep. thought it was fabulous. Yep. Fascinating family, the Houd stickers. Uh, and, and, uh, and one of, and the, the daughter in law still lives in Greenwich. She's a, she's a very famous uh, figure skater. Mm -hmm. And she was in the 56 Olympics. Mm -hmm. to the last two, and they are wonderful. Aren't they? And I'm wondering yeah. if they're juried or how? Yes, they are. Okay. They're juried. They're juried, and, and they usually, we, we, th we, uh, we actually, we put the, edu the ex exhibition com uh, uh, department onto it. They're very good with this because they, they all are amateur artists. We're more like professional artists, and they, they really do respond to these things in wonderful ways. They're the guys that fabricate all the, everything that we, we have in the building. And they, they do a wonderful job. Yep. More questions? Oh. I wanted to say thank you. And I wanted to say I love the show that you just had with the lighting from gaslight to electric light. Oh, yeah, Electric Paris. Paris. It was magnificent. Yeah. Yeah, wasn't that I fun? think that the museum is a, an absolute gem because it offers something for all. Uh, all ages. Yep. And I wondered if this building is green or it's, it's actually it's actually gray. It, it looks green. No, but I mean if it's I mean if it's um. Oh, is it green? Yes, yes, it's green. It's green. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, sorry, sorry. I, 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 it's uh, it's it's lead sponsorship. That it is it is it is good. Yep. Thank no. you so much. Thank sure, you. not at all. No. Um, no, that was it, it. That was a fun show, the Electric Paris show. Because can you imagine the novelty of suddenly having street lights? 
my goodness, you know, the, you know, it's, it's it must have been st staggering. Uh, really, it made for a very different, different nocturnal experience. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone, and good night.